Welcome to Conflict News 24. Firstly, we'll have a look at Israel, Gaza, Israel, Palestine tensions. Yesterday, there was a flare up of tensions uh, between Israel and Gaza. Uh, hundreds of rockets, more than 100 rockets, have been fired into Israel after Israel conducted a strikes on Gaza. And a strikes are still going on. What is happening there? Is there any immediate end to this escalation can this escalation expand can west bank be involved as well why is hamas silent so far several questions secondly china taiwan tensions china is conducting military drills close to taiwan and uh, taiwan says that these are not military drills this is a simulation of an attack. What China is doing, it is a simulated attack on Taiwan. It's not a military drill. Secondly, China has prohibited import of any item with sticker made in China. So all the importers will have to change the label, the sticker. Uh, thirdly, three countries released a joint statement against Chinese maneuvers, Australia, Japan and US. Thirdly, we'll have a look at uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. Amnesty International is under pressure because two days ago it released a statement. It said that Ukrainian forces were endangering the lives of civilians. Now, uh, Ukrainian head of uh, Amnesty, Amnesty's head of Ukraine uh, has resigned. Secondly, Joe Biden is going to give $1 billion assistance to Ukraine in coming days. Uh, U.S. government is considering the approval of this assistance. And lastly, we have details for you on the map. It seems that in the southwestern direction, a uh, large mobilization of Russian forces is being seen, southwestern part of Ukraine. So either a major offensive is coming from Russia uh, or Ukraine is going to launch a major offensive uh, in this area. That is why this defensive preparation is underway. We have details for you and some claims that uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is being used as a military base by Russians. Firstly, let's start uh, uh, this bulletin of uh, conflict news from the Middle East. Yesterday, Israel conducted a strikes on Gaza. A strikes are still continuing. How did the escalation start? Israeli forces arrested Basim al-Sadi, who is uh, a commander of uh, Palestine Islamic Jihad, PIJ. He was arrested in West Bank. After that, PIJ, mainly based in Gaza, threatened to retaliate. And Israel started preemptive air strikes on PIJ positions in Gaza. So since yesterday, Israeli strikes have been going on uh, on Gaza, mostly on the areas, on the places being used by uh, PIJ. And yesterday, another PIJ commander was killed in these strikes. His name is uh, Taiser Al Jabari. Uh, around 11 casualties are being confirmed so far in Gaza, and and. Uh, uh, around 100 have been injured, including a five-year-old girl who has uh, been killed, not injured. She died in yesterday's air strikes, Israeli air strikes on Gaza. PIJ is vowing to fight. It says it will continue fighting. And some other armed groups are also joining PIJ. Armed groups uh, from West Bank like Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, Al-Nasir Salahuddin and some other armed groups based in West Bank. They held some meetings and they announced to support uh, 
PIJ. But so far, we have not seen any major attacks on Israeli forces from West Bank. So, main uh, escalation is uh, in Gaza. That Israel is conducting air strikes on Gaza. And from Gaza, these uh, armed groups, especially PIJ, PIJ is firing rockets into Israeli territories. More than around 150 rockets have been fired so far. And most of the rockets were intercepted by Israeli Iron Dome air defense system. How long will this escalation go on? No one knows. But uh, uh, PIJ's uh, commander, who is based in Iran, Z uh, Ziyad Nahala, held a meeting with uh, IRGC, Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps Commander Hussein Salami today. And Nahala commanded the performance, uh, the rocket firing of PIJ in Gaza. So this escalation can go on. Israel says that uh, it is conducting air strikes not on civilians but on PIJ positions because PIJ is a threat to Israel. And PIJ is a proxy group based uh, in Iran, backed by Iran. This escalation will go on for some time. Interestingly, Hamas, main group in uh, Gaza, is silent. Abu Hamza, Hamas uh, 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 spokesperson, Abu Ubaida. Uh, Abu Ubaida is Hamas spokesperson. Uh, Abu Hamza is spokesperson of PIJ. Abu Ubaida, Hamas spokesperson, is silent so far. No statement from this major group. Uh, uh, ruling a party as well, an armed group too, known for having some capabilities of uh, firing rockets too. Because last year we saw that uh, Hamas uh, fired thousands of rockets into Israel in May last year. This time Hamas is silent. But it is letting PIJ to fire rockets from Gaza. So will Hamas join uh, PIJ or not? Will other armed groups in West Bank join uh, PIJ or not? This is the important question. Israel has recalled its reserve forces. 25,000 reserve soldiers have been called. They have been told to be on alert. So overall, uh, no signs of de-escalation so far. Civilians uh, are dying too because... Uh, uh, Israeli uh, strikes, uh, though they are targeting PIJ positions, but the PIJ is based in residential areas. Residential buildings are being targeted, some civilian casualties are also being reported. And so far, no civilian casualty has been reported in Israel due to firing of rockets from Gaza because most of the rockets are intercepted by Israeli air defense system. Tension still uh, there, viewers. Uh, secondly, we have... Uh, uh, details for you about uh, China-Taiwan conflict. China is conducting uh, military drills all around Taiwan. Taiwan seems to be under siege. Tomorrow on Sunday, uh, the drills are expected to come to an end. But let's see. Uh, can China announce uh, an extension tomorrow? Let's see. Uh, but Taiwan today in a statement said that these are not military drills. This is a simulated attack on Taiwan from China. So Chinese forces, their formation, their positions, uh, their planning and their maneuvers uh, are not uh, indicative of military drills. Rather, China is a simulating an attack on Taiwan. Chinese and Taiwanese uh, warships have been seen sailing very close uh, and uh, China has violated the median line between uh, Taiwan and China in Taiwan Strait, but no direct engagement so far. Meanwhile, uh, three countries have issued a joint statement uh, asking China to seize its military maneuvers. The three countries are the US, secondly Japan and a third country is uh, Australia. Uh, yesterday in Cambodia, 
ASEAN of foreign ministers held a meeting. On the sidelines of this meeting, the three foreign ministers held a meeting and they issued a joint statement. They said that uh, issues should be resolved peacefully and Chinese military maneuvers are uh, a threat for regional stability. China must end its uh, military maneuvers uh, immediately. But maneuvers uh, continue. Early China has prohibited the use of phrase made in Taiwan. All exporters uh, who export goods, items to China from Taiwan, from other parts of the world, they'll have to avoid using made in Taiwan. They can write made in Chinese Taipei or made in Taiwan China. New directions will be passed and Reportedly, Apple has passed uh, directions to its suppliers that uh, they should not use the label made in Taiwan, made in Chinese Taiwan or made in uh, uh, Taiwan China should be used. Overall, tensions there. Tomorrow's crucial viewers. Let's see, will these maneuvers come to an end on Sunday or not? Or will there be an extension? If China announces to extend these maneuvers, it could lead to further escalation of tensions in the Pacific Ocean. Thirdly, it was Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, Amnesty International is under pressure. Two days ago, Amnesty issued a report. Amnesty said that Ukrainian forces were endangering the lives of civilians by setting up bases, uh, military bases in urban areas. Uh, Vladimir Zelensky, Ukrainian president, lashed out at Amnesty after this report. And now, uh, Amnesty International's head of Ukraine has resigned. Her name is... Uh, Oksana Pokolchuk, she is uh, Ukraine's head of Amnesty International. Now she she's against the report which was released two days ago by Amnesty. In a message, she said, uh, if you don't live in a country uh, that is being torn apart, you will never understand what it means to blame the army of defenders. So she is saying that uh, Amnesty International is not uh, looking at uh, on the ground situation. It is unfairly blaming defenders, Ukrainian army. That is why she has resigned. Now we have details for you on the map about major mobilization of Russian military in southwestern part of Ukraine. What is coming? You can see Odessa, Kherson, Kiriviri, uh, and here this is Crimea. In southwestern part of Ukraine, mobilization of Russian army is being seen along this river. This blue uh, patch shows uh, Nipper River viewers. And here there is uh, Zaporizhia. It is under Ukrainian control. Melitopol under Russian control. And uh, Anarhodar. This is Anarhodar. Here there is nuclear power plant which is under Russian control. And uh, uh, Ukraine says that uh, Russia is using this uh, power plant uh, as a military base. Munitions are being stored and it could lead to some dangerous situation. From these places uh, to the south of uh, Nipper River, Russian forces are being mobilized uh, here uh, in this direction along this uh, river, especially from Melitopol uh, and from these areas. Russian forces are moving towards the river, this river. Along the river, Russians are trying to consolidate their position in Kherson. On Kherson, either a major Ukrainian offensive is expected. Kherson city is under the control of Russian forces. And uh, we know that Crimea is also under Russian control. 
So Crimea is being reinforced as well. Forces are arriving, Russian forces arriving in Crimea and in Kherson. So either from Kherson, Russians could make a move towards Mykolaiv or uh, Kiriviri. You can say Kiriviri here. Either Russians are planning to move from Kherson to Mykolaiv and uh, to Kiriviri or a major offensive uh, by Ukraine is coming on Kherson. That is why along this river, Russian uh, deployment is being seen from this eastern part, from these areas, from Russian territories, from uh, Donetsk region. Uh, large number of uh, tanks, artillery pieces, other military uh, equipment, uh, other arms, weapons have been seen mobilized towards this strip. So it means that in coming days, from Kherson to Anarhoda to Zaporizhia, along this river, Nipper River, we could see major fighting, especially near Kherson. Ukraine wants to take back Kherson. Kherson is the first major city which was taken by Russians when they attacked Ukraine. In coming days, we could see serious fighting uh, in this part of Ukraine, which is southwest part of Ukraine. Thank you for watching.